Hey everybody, welcome back to A Better Computer. My name is Matt, and I think one of the harder things to do in a tech review are to make blanket statements around who should update to this new product. Everyone's coming from a different spot. Everyone has different financial situations. Everyone just has different things they want from a product and different needs that they have uh, fulfilled by it. So it's really hard to make some sort of blanket statement around who should do it. I think it's hard enough with a full on just like computer, like a laptop, a tablet or a phone. But with stuff like this, this is the Apple Watch Series 7 that just came out last week. Who should update to it? It's really hard to say, uh, especially with the Apple Watch, which is more of a fashion item than some of the other more regular computer style things that we talk about most of the time. On the one hand, you have people who buy the Apple Watch because they love the functionality. They love the health sensors. They love the uh, just the features of watchOS and what it allows them to do. So if a watch comes out that doesn't have any new functions, new things they can actually do with it, they don't really care that much. On the other end of the spectrum, you have people who care more about the fashion side of the Apple Watch. They care about the colors of the body. They care about the size of the screen. They care about the watch faces they can use and the bands they can use. That's more important to them. And then, of course, there's people all in the middle, uh, different spots along the spectrum. But there's a lot of people who have different priorities with the Apple Watch that don't necessarily line up with the traditional things we talk about in tech reviews. So with that in mind, I'm going to try to let you know what I think is notable about the Series 7 compared to the Series 6, but then I'm going to go further back. I'm going to talk about what I think is notable if you're updating from the Series 5, the Series 4, the Series 3, and even the Series 2, 1, and the original Apple Watch. So if you have any of those Apple Watches before, you'll get an idea about what you're going to get with this update. So let's jump into it. Okay, so if you're coming from an Apple Watch Series 6, the most notable update for you is going to be the larger screen. The case size is really close to the same. It's about one millimeter taller on both the small and large Apple Watch, but the screen is 20% bigger. They reduced the bezels by quite a bit and it's much bigger. And you notice it just when using the watch in general. I think if you just look at it side by side with the Series 6, sometimes it's kind of hard to tell the difference, but when you're actually using the watch, you really notice it. If you've been using the watch for a couple years and you're used to how big the buttons are and kind of where you need to tap on things, you're immediately going to notice how much larger the touch targets are everywhere. It's a really substantial update in terms of just how much screen real estate you have to work with. And I think this is a good accessibility feature as well for people, because if you have issues with fine motor movements where you need to like touch these really small targets on your wrist, it's really nice to have more space to do that. So that's a really great thing if that's a thing you had issues with in the past. This larger screen also brings with it an exclusive feature when typing onto the Apple Watch. Previously, you could dictate, you could scribble and you could do emojis. And now you're also able to use an on-screen keyboard. So you can either tap or you can use swipe to type, uh, to type whatever you'd like. It works pretty well in my opinion. It's not gonna be the thing you use to write long emails, but it is a nice option to have when you're entering short bits of text for text message responses, quick email replies, whatever you do from the watch where you actually uh, want to send some text. I think dictation is still the best thing, but when you wanna type something out, I think this is more convenient than scribble in most cases. So for me, it's really taken over those situations where I used to scribble something down, now I can use the keyboard. And then of course there are two new watch faces uh, that I think look pretty slick. I actually really like both of them, uh, but these are exclusive to the Series 7. And if you're coming from the Series 6, you may not be getting many more new watch faces going forward. Uh, that's because when Apple updates the screen size of the Apple Watch, at least the one time they did it in the past, they immediately stopped releasing new watch faces for the old screen size. So I don't know if they're gonna do that this time. We'll really get a better idea about that in June next year at WWDC 2022. But if history repeats, this means that if you have a Series 6, you're really done getting new watch faces and all the new watch faces in the future will be exclusive to the Series 7 and newer. We'll see if that's what they do, but that's a risk you take by having the older watch. So the most substantial update I think in this update, if you're coming from the Series 5, is gonna be the battery life improvements. The Series 5 was the first to introduce the always on screen and that came with a definite hit to battery life. That was my experience. I know that was a lot of other people's experience as well. It's always hard to talk about battery life with the Apple Watch because it seems like there's a lot of variance between people. If I say my battery life is great, I'll get people coming out of the woodwork to say it's terrible. And if I say my watch uh, battery is terrible, I'll have other people say, actually, it's great for me. So you're doing something wrong. So it's really hard to talk about. It's definitely less consistent than things like phones or tablets or laptops or whatever. Um, but I think that is pretty unquestionable that the Series 6 and 7 have better battery life than the Series 5. Uh, so if you have issues with the Series 5 with battery life, you're definitely going to get quite a bit more with the Series 7. Kind of related to that is faster charging. So this is actually an update over the Series 6 as well, but it's so subtle that I don't really think most people will notice. Uh, but if you use the uh, Apple Watch charger that comes in the box, it has a USB-C connector, and if you connect it to a USB-C 
power brick that does, I think, 18 or 20 watts is what they want uh, to get the full speed. You get about 33% faster charging speed overall, which is great. And they do promise that if you charge it up before you go to bed, it just takes eight minutes on the charger to get you enough to make it through the night to do sleep tracking. So that's a nice thing as well. Oh, and if you're coming from the Series 5, you're going to get a new health sensor. There's the blood oxygen sensor that Apple released in the Series 6. It comes along to the Series 7, of course. And this is not a thing that I used very often. I did a couple manual tests. It runs in the background every couple hours to do a, a test quickly uh, on your wrist as well to just check your blood oxygen. In the past year of using it, I've never gotten an alert. I've never had an issue with it. But it's definitely one of those things where if you do have an issue, it's nice to have the watch be able to kind of give you an alert that says, hey, double check your blood oxygen, like run a manual test right now and see if it is actually low. Um, but if it is, you may want to get to the doctor because something may be going wrong. So it's a feature that I haven't had to use, I guess, fortunately. But if I did need to use it, I'd be really happy it's there. So it's not a massive thing you don't need to update uh, to get this, but it is definitely another nice little health feature that's available on the Apple Watch. And finally, if you're coming from the Series 5, you'll get some minor speed improvements. There aren't really any speed improvements I can notice from the Series 6, but over the Series 5, you do get a couple of speed improvements. So it's not going to change everything for you, but it'll be a little faster overall. All right, now if you're coming from the Series 4 Apple Watch, you're going to get a much more notable update, and that's because you get the always on screen. So the Apple Watch Series 4 was the last one Apple shipped without the always on screen. I personally think the always on screen fundamentally changes the Apple Watch and makes it more useful overall. In the past couple years, uh, watchOS updates have made the always on screen better uh, and work with more apps. In watchOS 8, pretty much any third party app has the ability to use the always on screen. You just need apps to update to support it and they're starting to roll out slowly but surely, but they are rolling out and basically all of Apple's apps that you'd expect have it. So that's really great. And additionally, since the Series 5, which was the original one, Apple's improved the brightness of the always on screen. So when you're indoors and outdoors, you'll get improvements to the brightness of that always on mode so it's easier to see. If you're coming from the Series 6, I should also note that you do get an improvement in indoor brightness, but honestly, I didn't really notice a difference. But compared to the Series 5, it's noticeable how much more bright uh, the always-on mode is in both when you're in direct sunlight and when you're indoors in a dim room. So the always-on screen is really the big thing you're going to get in addition to all the other things I talked about. Uh, but you're also going to get a more notable speed improvements uh, compared to what you have right now, and you're going to get a compass. So the compass is not useful to everyone, but Apple did add a compass in the Series 5, uh, which basically made it so that you can use the compass just on your watch alone. Previously, there was a compass, but I think it only worked with the phone. The phone had to be involved somehow. I don't quite understand it, but anyway, if you're using the watch for hiking or whatever and you need a compass, it's going to be more reliable than what you have now. Then we get to the Series 3 and older. I'm just going to bundle all these together. So if you are coming from a Series 0 through Series 3, it's a massive update. So you're getting two screen size improvements, two generations of screen size improvements. So the screen's going to feel massive in comparison. If you have the 42 millimeter Apple Watch uh, Series 0 through 3, you may even want to look at the 41 millimeter uh, watch that exists today. So you may actually want the smaller one now because the screen is so much bigger. You're going to get um, a much better experience and you're going to get a bigger screen than you have now, even with the smallest Apple Watch. So that's really cool. Uh, you're also going to get ECG. So ECG is a really cool feature, uh, lets you basically uh, check your heart rate with more detail than just how fast is it beating. You get some more details on exactly kind of how it's beating, the cadence of its beats. I'm not a doctor, I'm not an expert at this, but it is really cool. I have a fr friend who has an irregular heartbeat uh, and I got to see him do it and it accurately identified his heartbeat, uh, which wasn't a big deal for him. He said it's a known thing. Uh, but if I ran a test and saw my heartbeat was different from normal, it had a, a weird rhythm, uh, the watch would tell me and I could go to the doctor and kind of get uh, actual <laughs> professional help with whatever's going on. Uh, it's not a medical device, but it definitely can give you some good information. And in my experience, seems to be pretty darn accurate. And you're also going to get massive, massive speed improvements. The Series 3 was really, really good when it came out and lasted a couple years where it was really good. But at this point, it's really long in the tooth. Uh, things like updates take forever on it right now. I know there's like some issue where like Series 3 owners are being asked to like when they install a watchOS 8 update, they're being asked to reset the device run the update and then restore from a backup, which is crazy. <laughs> it's crazy you have to do that. So um, yeah, you're gonna get a lot more onboard storage. You're gonna get a lot more performance. Just everything is gonna be faster. It's gonna feel like a brand new watch if you're coming from the Series 3. And if you're coming from the Series 2 or older, it's gonna be a massive, massive jump. So that's definitely all things to notice. 
So hopefully that was helpful giving you an idea for what you're going to get when you update from the Apple Watch you currently have. I think that if you don't have an Apple Watch yet, if you've never jumped on board, and that is the majority of Apple Watch buyers still to this day, I think this is a really good year to jump on board. There's the new design, which they're probably going to stick with for a couple years, so you're not going to have FOMO for missing the new design that they roll out in like 2022. It's probably going to look just like this. You're going to get software updates for a long time, of course, and it's just going to be, it's the best Apple Watch experience you can get. So the aluminum ones that start at $400 are not cheap, but I think that they hold their value pretty well over a couple years, at least as, as far as smartwatches go. Uh, so I think that's definitely, it's a good year to buy, jump on board. I think the Series 6 was kind of a, not a great year to jump on board. It was the third year with the design. Um, it didn't really have many notable updates over the Series 5, um, but this I think has some solid updates. Uh, and again, I think is going to last a couple years before it starts to feel out of date compared to the newer Apple Watches, the Series 8, the Series 9. I expect those to look basically the same as this. So yeah, hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, drop a like down below. If you want to see more videos like this, let me know in the comments, hit the subscribe button. You know all the things. I'll see you here next time. Bye-bye.